Hello YouTube, Runa here, and just gonna, there we go, close the lid of my laptop so the glare is not in my glasses. I'm back with part two of my first impressions video for Lucifer. Yes, now I'm wearing black lipstick. My red lipstick got a little screwed up, so I decided I was gonna just grab what was near and it happened to be black. So, no, I'm not wearing the same Event Sevenfold shirt all the time and other days or whatever. So, anyway, now, let's get into the video. I talked about, um, preliminary stuff in the last video. My feelings on him, a little bit of a testimonial. And now I'd like to talk about experience and my perception of him, how I feel him, how I interact with him, and such things. And I'll even tell you a little bit of a story. It'll be a shorter version. I might do the whole version some other time. Who knows? It depends. Depends. <laughs> so, um, coming away from my very terrible situation that was slandering him, if you've been watching any of my other videos, you'll know what I'm talking about very briefly. I've mentioned it before. And uh, for those of you who don't know, I was in a very abusive time. I was in a very dark place. And uh, the person that was doing the abusing was using him as a weapon against naive me that was coming out of Catholicism and such things. So, don't... Just take someone's word for it. Doesn't help that there was a lower level thing making it all feel and seem real, but that's a big story. Big story. <laughs> but the bottom line is, the thing was impersonating Lucifer, and that's a no-no. Don't do that. Fuck lower things to do that. And I will say that I've noticed that it's a common theme with certain things. Or, like, things that'll pretend to be God or whatever else. They pick some god, goddesses, de de or deity's name and say, I am such and such. Do as I say. <sighs> D don't, please don't fall for it. <sighs> but, as I was coming away from it, I knew where I belonged. I knew the left-hand path and um, Luciferian views demons. I knew that's where I belonged. That had become clear to me over that time. From what I had learned and what research I had done in the time leading up to when I got out, I knew that's where I belonged. Is the only thing that made sense to me. So, I wanted to dive in. But I will say, working with demons is something you should definitely think about before you do. As I was saying before, it starts a chain reaction, and you, once you open this door, you can't really close it again. I mean, the same can be said as the second you start playing with Ouija boards and tarot cards and other things. Once you start dabbling into things that connect you to the other side, that means things will start noticing you more. That is to be expected, but... With something like the demonic, or as some people call them ancient gods, which that seems more appropriate to what they are, because a demon is, it's, it's almost derogatory in some people's um, views. I don't really mind it, and me liking the dark side of things, I think it's kind of hot. <laughs> but, <laughs> um... Uh, I like the blasphemous side of things very much, and um, they don't seem to be offended when you call them demon too much, at least from my experience and everything. I don't like to refer to them as, like, imps or whatever, but okay. <sighs> Some people call them fiends or devils or whatever. Devils, okay, I guess. I guess. That's a, that's a less offensive thing than saying, you're the devil. <laughs> Christian devil blue. That's what I have to say to that. Anyway, <laughs> me and my quirkiness. 
but it is a door that you cannot shut once you start. So if you're looking to work with him or with some other demon, it is something you can't back out of. This also goes into if you're going to make a pact with a demon, say you need something, and they follow through, you make your pact and then you don't want to and you go running back to the church. Very few people, if anyone's going to have any sympathy for you with that. I'm just going to be honest. Honor your deals. No one likes a welcher. Seriously. No one likes a welcher. Don't flake. If you're going to make a promise, follow through. And he is big on that. I mean, that's criteria. If you're going to follow through with what you were going to do with Lucifer... He might not even work with you if he knows you're going to flake on him already. I mean, I kind of had it happen to a friend of mine. Well, she's not a friend of more, but that's a long story. A very long story. See, when I mentioned how uh, people that do not serve you are moved out of the way, it's kind of where that went. But, um,. She was claiming to be Luciferian, got the tattoo, the sigil and everything, and I'd never seen someone miss the point so far and then get mad at me for saying that. And not even in that kind of way. I've never seen that before. And while Luciferianism can be a very eclectic practice, it's very eclectic for me, but it holds the same core of ascent and uh, self-transformation that I think it should for anyone daring to call themselves that. And if you're going to call yourself something, be that thing. Be for your team. Do not be a poser. I do not like posers. While I'm not an elitist with things, there is a difference between being an elitist and then knowing what something is versus what it's not. There is a difference. Think about that for a second. There is a difference. Anyway, basically what had happened with her is he showed a little bit of interest in her because she seemed to have some potential and I was trying to help get her connected and, and everything by her will, mind you, but she kept flaking out and backing out and trying to re-rationalize and everything else and he was getting upset. <laughs> frustrated he doesn't like his time wasted I think he stayed a little longer because of me perhaps but I don't know but it basically came down to it at the end is if you're going to want me as your father figure or your uh, deity patron or partner business partner whatever if you're gonna want to work with me and be for the team either you're gonna honor the thing that you said when you got the tattoo, because her tattoo was her symbolization of um, initiation in blood and everything. That was her version of it. And if you're going to do that, honor what you said. And she wasn't doing that. And she got mad. <laughs> she got mad. You can't blame him. You cannot blame him. At all. And can't you can't rightfully be mad at him for wanting you to keep up with what you said your word is your word and if you can't go by your word what are you worth <sighs> that's that's terrible and ultimately that was the end of our friendship that that was the last straw there and then a week later we were done i mean she had offended me horribly that whole time but um, trying to be as biased as, as a non-biased and as neutral as possible while delivering the message as to not seem like I'm trying to, you know, manipulate. But, well, of course, she took it that way anyway. But bottom line here, and I've been talking for a while, and it's going to turn into a part three pretty quick. <laughs> I'm a talker. I'm a Gemini. We talk. <laughs> um, bottom line is 
be ready to transform yourself. Be ready to do this and to work and to be shown the truth. Be ready to do this. Be ready to honor your deals or don't do this. Don't do this. And if you're here watching this, you're considering it, I'm sure. Or you're just curious. But either way, you're here for a reason. And I would definitely recommend giving it some thought. It's worth it. Now, energies and such. I, I feel him as a very strong, potent presence. But if you know how it feels to be, like, in the light, like I'm sitting in a lit room, but for that light to feel pure, that is akin to how his energy feels to me. It is a, a strong, unyielding purity. Whereas other entities I feel as more uh, aggressive, more dominating, more dark. It's like sitting in the darkness. Because there's a distinct feeling between the two, if you've ever really taken notice to it or thought about it. That's how it kind of feels to me. And then there's an, an electrical edge, too. So it doesn't always come as electrical for me, but a lot of times that's a tip-off. And when it does, it's pretty damn strong. So he is a very distinctive energy. Usually I do know it's him when he's near me or touching me or whatever. And it is a, a peaceful, inviting energy. He's not a scary or inherently scary entity. He can be. Sure, he can be. I wouldn't suggest making him angry. I wouldn't suggest being a disrespectful prick. <laughs> but um, he's very patient. He's very peaceful in nature. And that was my toe cracking, if you heard that. <laughs> um, anyway, he's very peaceful in nature. And he wants to teach you. He wants you to succeed. He does not want to bring you down by telling you these painful truths. That is not the intention. The intention is to be forward and straight with you. If you're going to see him as an equal, or he's going to see you as an equal, or a teacher, mentor to student mentality, you have to be ready to be able to accept this information. And he will give it to you. And he will take initiative at times. He has been known to take initiative without you asking him to do that. He has done that for me. And I've been very appreciative of the things that he's done. Um, other people will say the other things, too. He's He wants to help you. He's always there. Um, one thing I will say in my particular experience is that one of the biggest things that he has done for me is healing. Now, coming from the past that I did, I was afraid to actually talk to him for a while. Now, you kind of understand because there's a mix of feelings going there. It's like, I want this. I need this. I know I should. I need to nut up and just talk to him and do this. But at the same time, anxiety. What if he's angry at me? For this, which is illogical to think, but as someone who's new and coming away from abuse and riddled with PTSD from the abuse at the time, that's not a uh, far-fetched, outlandish thought to have. What if somehow he's angry with me? This is humiliating. He saw everything, didn't he? Oh no. These are the thoughts running through my head. And on the same things, I was like, oh, why, why would he ever want to work with someone like me? I'm a mess. Oh, it was, it was bad. It was bad. And um, coming up to the 15-minute mark, this is like the average amount of time I can record on here without um, it cutting out. So 
this is gonna have to go for a, a part three, and I will start telling this over and over. I'm gonna start with this. So, I know I said I was gonna say this earlier. Like I said, Gemini, I'm a talker. So, <laughs> thank you for watching. Links in the description below if you're interested in spiritual services. Questions, comments, concerns. Message me, comment, anything. Have a good day. Blessings. And, uh, bye. <laughs>